first of all, good morning to everybody, and I uh, just wanted to come up here and uh, visit uh, the folks that have been evacuated and that are uh, needing the shelters. We want to thank, uh, of course, Chancellor Yang uh, from this university here that uh, they have done an extraordinary job in opening up the facilities and creating this, this shelter, and there's uh, hundreds of people that are staying here. And I think that uh, there's other shelters, of course, around uh, the, the city. And, uh, of course, Sheriff uh, Brown will have a very important announcement uh, to make right after this. But I just wanted to let you know that I'm very proud the way the whole community works together here. The volunteers, the Red Cross, uh, the local officials, law enforcement, Sheriff Brown with all his uh, team uh, in order to coordinate the evacuations. As you know, there's uh, 60,000 people that have been evacuated uh, 30,000 mandatory evacuations and the others uh, voluntary. Uh, there is uh, 8,700 uh, acres that have burned so far. Uh, so it's really a devastating fire that has really uh, had a tremendous effect on the people here. More than 80 homes have been destroyed so far. And this is when you talk about personal belongings, they get wiped out and, uh, and, and homes. It takes people years to build and so on. So, you know, I feel really bad for the kind of damage it has caused to so many people. That's why I wanted to come out here. But uh, the fire officials, I want to thank the firefighters for the great work that they're doing. And we have, uh, you know, a huge amount, 14,000 firefighters. There's 500 engines that are working, uh, 10 helicopters and uh, uh, 14 aircraft that are dumping uh, water and fire retardant materials. A DC-10 that is also working on that now in order to contain those fires. 30% of the fires have been uh, contained so far, so they're doing a great job. There's great coordination between uh, the, the locals and the state and also, like I said, between the law enforcement and fire officials. Here, it's, it's great to walk around and to see all of these people that are here in the shelters, uh, complimenting the Red Cross, complimenting the university, complimenting law enforcement for the great work that they're doing. They're getting their water, they're getting their coffees, they're getting their food, they're getting the shelter, they have playgrounds here, they have everything here. People feel really comfortable. As a matter of fact, one woman came up to me and said, I like it here much better than my home because here, <laughs> finally, I'm, I'm getting served rather than me always having to provide for the family. So there's great sense of humor also here and so on. So the important thing is to let them know that we, the state, are on top of the situation and that I really care and I feel bad about the damage that has caused the properties and they have to be evacuated. And now I would like to turn it over before I answer some questions uh, to uh, Sheriff Brown to say a few words about the great announcement that people can start moving back into their homes, please. Great. Well, thank you very much, Governor. And uh, first of all, I want to thank the Governor for being here. This is the fourth major fire that we've had in the last two years, and this governor has been here every single time to provide uh, support, and his uh, presence does raise morale, and it's a tremendous uh, benefit to uh, not only the uh, members of the public safety team, but also to the citizens of our county, so I want to thank you for that. Thank you. Uh, I'm joined here by uh, Chief Cam Sanchez from the Santa Barbara Police Department, and we have uh, a nice development. It's, uh, it's nice to be able to, to give you some good news uh, instead of some news of concern. Uh, just this morning, we have a, an evacuation update uh, that we'd like to uh, let all of you know about. The Unified Command Teamwork has developed a plan for the safe, structured return of residents to their homes and businesses. The current mandatory evacuation order has been downgraded to an evacuation warning for the following areas. Effective immediately, all residences south of Foothill Road that's Highway 192. From Mission Canyon Road south to Los Olivos, Los Olivos to Garden Street, Garden Street to Constance Road, Constance Road to State Street, State Street west to San Roque Road, San Roque Road north to Foothill Road. And again, that's Highway 192. In addition, all residences south of Cathedral Oaks from Patterson Avenue south to Highway 101, Highway 101 east to Turnpike Road, Turnpike Road north to Cathedral Oaks Road. Those areas on the perimeter of which I just described are open, effective immediately. So anyone in that area can return to their home. <laughs> But as they say in the commercials, wait, there's more. <laughs> Effective at 11.30 a.m. today, 
all residences south of Foothill 192 from Hope Avenue south to State Street, State Street east to San Roque, San Roque north to Foothill Road, and all residences south of Cathedral Oaks from Turnpike to Highway 101 east to Highway 154, Highway 154 north to Cathedral Oaks, at, which is the intersection of Cathedral Oaks and Foothill Road. Those areas will be open and people will be able to start entering who live in those areas effective at 1130. Then at 12 o'clock, all residences south of Foothill Road from Hope Avenue south to State Street, State Street west to Highway 154, Highway 154 north to Foothill Road, uh, residents of the above locations may return to their homes and businesses. Now, this is obviously being done in stages. We have a significant number of people who have been evacuated, and we don't want everybody rushing to get there at the same time and have huge traffic jams. So that's why it's been tiered into three groups. So we hope everyone will please adhere to that. Please remember that an evacuation warning still exists in the area. Returning residents and business owners are cautioned to remain aware of the potential for an evacuation order on short notice. Highway 154 north of Calle Real remains closed, except for emergency vehicle traffic only. Cathedral Oaks from Patterson Avenue east, continuing east past Highway 154 and Foothill Road to Mission Canyon, will remain closed except for emergency vehicle traffic only. All other existing mandatory evacuation orders and evacuation warnings remain in effect. The Unified Command is constantly evaluating the situation to repopulate the affected areas, and they'll be opened as soon as it is deemed safe to do so. Uh, if uh, if uh, someone lives on the south side of Cathedral Oaks on Foothill, but the only access is through Cathedral Oaks or Foothill, they will be allowed in with proof of residency uh, to access uh, beyond the barricades to return to their homes. So, uh, uh, again, we've developed this plan to provide for the safe and structured return of all residents. We're working on trying to get everyone back into their homes as soon as possible. Uh, we still have uh, fire activity that the fire officials are working on, and, uh, again, we hope to get everyone back as soon as possible. But it's nice to be able to deliver some good news to you for a change. Sheriff, do you know about how many of those 30,000 people then that's it is going to be a very significant proportion of the amount of people who have been evacuated. It is the largest of the populated areas. Uh, the ones that are going to remain closed are, are generally up on the periphery, uh, and it's, it's uh, I don't have the exact figures, but the bulk of people who have been displaced are going to now be able to get back to their homes, at least by noon today. Any other questions that anyone has? Governor, well, this fire compared to last year's team fire, uh, well, what do you think about the damages compared to last year's team fire? Well, uh, I think that uh, we have had the same problem as we had last year here, and that is that the weather uh, was a huge problem because we had the dry conditions, uh, we had very hot weather, and we had the winds. As you know, this was the big problem here with up to 50 mile an hour winds. So this is why the fire spread very quickly, and it's very challenging for the firefighters. But because, again, because of the great coordination, and because we have the best firefighters in the world and the bravest most selfless firefighters, and that we have the resources available, uh, if it's the, 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 the aircrafts, the helicopters, and also the engines, 500 engines now are up there fighting those fires, and like I said, you know, uh, 14,000 firefighters, so I mean, that is really extraordinary manpower, that's what really helps us put those fires out, so I think it's, it's all about coming together, law enforcement, and the firefighters and then volunteers here that help people through these difficult times when they have to be evacuated and so on. So I think the long, the better we, uh, you know, the faster we can get to come together, the more we can be helpful. And I think that's what we as a state are doing. And that's why I'm here today to make sure that uh, we all work together and that the people get uh, taken care of. Thank you. Sure, Thank you. absolutely. Thank you. Have a good day. Right. And to check things out. But the, the bottom line is, is that uh, the fire and fighters and all the fire officials, law enforcement, volunteers, Red Cross, local and state agencies all have worked together really well. And that's why you see really fast action here, even though the weather has not always been uh, very helpful with the high winds of 50 miles an hour. 
but I think that 30 percent of the fire is contained now, but still 8,700 acres have uh, been destroyed and uh, over 80 homes have been wiped out and burned down. So it's you know, sad for people that they spent so much time on building those homes and recreating their homes, and then they see it all destroyed uh, just uh, within a few hours. Uh, so we are here to help. I come up here to give them all support and let them know that the state uh, is 100% uh, behind them. That's why we declared the emergency for this uh, area here, for Santa Barbara area, so that we get 75% of the, the cost reimbursed from the federal government. So we, uh, you know, it, it, it takes care of, you know, paying for retaining and wiping out and stopping those fires, bringing them under containment and all this. And, um, uh, I think it's important when you have a disaster like this that people know that they get help. We, we get the help. Does it worry you that the fire season started so early? Um, it doesn't worry me because I think that uh, California is one of the states that uh, we are dealing with uh, disasters so many times that this state, and everyone recognizes this all over the United States, that this state is better prepared for disasters than any other state because of that. Yeah. And because uh, we work really together with the locals so well, we have good relations with the local agencies, the state, and the federal agencies, because what is important when you have a disaster is that everyone has good communication and that you create immediate action rather than delays and working by the book, so to speak. We don't work by the book. I mean, we go beyond the book, and we just immediately, as soon as we hear there's a fire, we all jump into action, or if there is uh, an outbreak of the flu or any that kind of thing, we immediately jump into action, all of us, and work together, and so we have had the, the tremendous help from the locals and from the federal government, and that makes it really helpful. And we have to recognize that the fire season that used to be in the fall, that's over. The fire season now is all year round. And there's no more such thing as kind of slacking off and having just three uh, firefighters in one truck uh, and then in the fall you go to four firefighters per truck. We have done this right now. I've declared a, a, an executive order and uh, we have uh, stepped it up and got all the resources ready because we knew that the wildfire was going to start early. And this is why I declared this as the Wildfire Awareness Week. And I went up and down the state this week to let people know firefighting uh, that, that the wildfires are going to come. And sure enough, during that week, ironically, uh, we started the first fire right here in Santa Barbara. So I think we want to warn people, and I think that's an important message. We want to let them know that 90% of the fires are started by people, uh, accidentally and sometimes on purpose. And so we want to let them know, don't play with matches, don't do the fire uh, uh, crackers and all of those kind of things, and explosives and so on. Uh, don't, uh, you know, do uh, the defensible space, the 100 uh, for defensible space around the house. Clear off the pine needles and the leaves, the dry leaves and branches from your rooftops. Um, put your stuff together in case you have to move out in 10 minute notice, so you know where are your personal belongings. Where, where is your passport, the driver's license, insurance policy, the most important pictures and documents that you need, and the belongings that you need, where is that? So they don't have to scramble. So those are the kind of important things you want to let people know. And the important thing also is, is always take pictures of all your belongings and then file it away in a safe deposit box, those pictures, because then when you want, when there's a disaster or your house burns down, you can go to the insurance company and say, here's the proof of all my belongings, and uh, they're insured, this is the value, and uh, please can we have the money and, and, and start rebuilding our home. So, you know, we have farmers, uh, insurance has a truck over there, and it's a one-stop shop, so they are helpful, but I mean, if you don't have the record, then it's very tough to go and uh, make the claims. What do you think of these folks who say, hey, I want to stay back and defend my home with my water hose, you know, spraying the roof? And and many of them say, hey, I did save my home. It was because I was there putting out the hot embers. What do you, what do you say to these people? I always uh, say that do what uh, law enforcement and what the fire officials tell you to do. Because let me tell you something, we have the most experienced firefighters, the most experienced fire marshals really well-trained law enforcement, when they say, leave your house, that means that you are in danger. And no one wants to go and have, see someone, you know, go through a fire and, and get and, 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 and 
where it costs a life just because they try to put out the fire themselves. That's why we're firefighters. It's very courageous. I think that people should always do whatever they can, but not after the fire starts. Do it before the fire starts, where you can be really showing, you know, uh, being courageous and being smart is to take care of the 100 foot defensible space around your house and be smart to clear off your rooftops and do those kind of things. That's where you can be smart. But when the fires start, yes, you can hose the fire down before you leave. Uh, I mean, hose the house down and all those things. But when they say get out, get out. Well, you know, we have um, you know, a lot of homes that were destroyed here in the uh, The people work very hard. And uh, people work years and years and years to build their homes. And, uh, you know, to, bring together their personal belongings and collect all the things that's wiped out within hours. And so I wanted to come up here and to let the people know we, the state, are 100% behind them. We will do everything we can to get their lives back again uh, as quickly as possible. And we have, uh, you know, shelters here. Um, I think that it's very important that the people get the help from the Red Cross, from volunteers and everything. So I wanted to come visit the shelters here yeah. and uh, go around to see how the people are doing if they need anything more uh, than that. We have declared an emergency uh, in this area also, so we get 75% of the cost of putting out those fires will come from the federal government, which is very important for us since we are really in trouble financially at this state. And so everyone is working together. That's the important thing. And, you know, it's all about leadership. When they see me here and when law enforcement sees me here and when uh, the Red Cross sees me here and the farmers insurance and the insurance companies, they set up their one-stop shops here. When they see you here, then they all work much harder and they get inspired and they come together and work for the people. And that's what it's all about is to help the people as quickly as possible. Well, they know you mean business. Yeah, exactly. And you know, the, 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 the sad story is that the 8,700 acres uh, got wiped out with those fires. And uh, but the good uh, side of it is, is that uh, the firefighters are the best in the world. They're tough. They're up there day and night fighting those fires. And we have now 10, ten helicopters. Uh, we have 14 other aircrafts that dump water and fire retardant materials. And TC-10 has arrived, so we're using that also. So everyone is really working together on a local level and on a state level and on a federal level. And that is the important thing. And so I appreciate uh, because Rob is uh, always concerned about the fire. So I'm always well, in touch with him since he's right there where the he action is. Here. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. we're always talking about and I get a little temperature also from him and uh, from local law enforcement of what's going on here with the fire. So I just wanted to come up here this morning and to just visit the people that are, you know, stranded here in the shelters. You've made your home um, in Montecito and Santa Barbara. So this must really just personally devastate you. The, the damage and the property lost. It does. It's, it's very sad. Uh, friends and neighbors who, who've lost, you know, their whole lives, as Arnold was talking about. But it's also inspiring because you see this community come together. You see uh, law enforcement and fire from all over the state. I mean, you, you, I talk to firefighters from Orange County, from Los Angeles County, people from up in Grosvenor Beach. People come from all over and, and really pull together. And that that part of it's really inspiring. Yeah. And uh, you and the wife and the kids, everybody's safe. We're all safe. We were watching the big DC-10, which is an amazing right. piece of equipment we have here in California. Drop the flame retardant on the mountains. It was just awe-inspiring. How close did it get to, to, your, to your home? Uh, it, close, it looks closer than it actually is, but I could see the flames from my, from my backyard. But, but we, were, uh, we were crossing our fingers. Did you see... Uh Chancellor Chang. Hello, Chancellor. How are you? And his wonderful, yes, beautiful yes, wife yes, here. And they've been married for 43 years. And he's been a great leader for this university here. <laughs> and uh, and uh, he is the one that is in charge of and invited uh, to have the, this shelter here. And that's an important thing here because he uh, immediately jumped into action. And I think that one has to put the, the spotlight on leaders like him because without any hesitation, opened up the campus got the, the Red Cross and the volunteers to come in, set up shelter with all the, the, the cards and the blankets and the, 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 the pillows and everything, food and drinks and everything that the people need, diapers and uh, baby formulas and whatever else. You've got to be very creative about those things. This man is terrific, so I just want to point out that without him we wouldn't have the shelter here. Well, so you've given the evacuees well, a home away from home. Sure. So. And the governor is the inspiration. You know, he has been here second time in three days. That's very great. Thank you very much.